SCI stands for spinal cord injury. But what is the spinal cord? The spinal cord is a cylindrical bundle of nerve tracks with surrounding tissue that connects the brain to the body. It looks something like this. It is important because it is the very link which allows us to move, feel and respond to stimuli. Basically, the spinal cord is life. But what happens when something goes wrong? Yep, you guessed it, a spinal cord injury. Spinal cord injury occurs when there is damage to the spinal cord and thus affecting communication between the central nervous system and the periphery. Sensory motor impairment and reflex dysfunction form part of the classical presentation of these injuries. Injuries are referred to as complete or incomplete based on whether there is sensory, motor or both sensory and motor impairment occurring at the site of the injury. When can you suspect a spinal cord injury casualty? In any unconscious patient, in a patient with significant head injury or major facial fractures, in a patient who sustained a fall from a height or has almost drowned, a patient with local features such as pain, deformities or stab wounds near the spine, a patient with distal features such as neurological deficits and general features like unexplained shock. This is shock where the peripheries are warm and classically there is a cold nose and warm feet presentation or unexplained respiratory distress or unexplained urinary retention or priapism in males of course. How do we assess SCIs? ABCs with C-spine control using a collar and then one stable a neurological exam with classification using the ASIA score. This is the American Spinal Injury Association score, which is important for management. This is how it works. Step one, determine the sensory level for both the right and left side. The sensory level is the most caudal intact dermatome for both pinprick and light touch sensation. What you will do then is ask your patient if they feel you touch them or pinprick them in the areas mapped out on the dermatome map. Score these out of two. Zero being absent sensation, one being altered or either decreased or impaired sensation, and two being normal sensation. Step two, determine the motor levels for both the right and the left side. This is done according to the muscle function grading between zero and five. Zero being total paralysis, one being palpable or visible contraction, two, active movement, three, active movement against gravity, four, active movement with moderate resistance, and five, being full movement or power. Ask your patient to flex their elbow. This corresponds with C5. Ask them to extend their wrist. This corresponds with C6. Ask them to extend their elbow. This corresponds with C7. Ask them to flex their fingers. This corresponds with C8. And ask them to abduct their fingers. This corresponds with T1. Then assess the lower lip. Ask your patient to flex their hip. This corresponds with L2. Ask them to extend their knee. This corresponds with L3. Ask them to dorsiflex their ankle. This corresponds with L4. Ask them to extend their big toe. This corresponds with L5. And then ask them to plant a flex their ankle. This corresponds with S1. Now determine the motor level. Step three, determine the neurological level of injury. This refers to the most caudal segment of the cord with intact sensation and anti-gravity, that is three or more muscle function strength, provided that there is normal intact sensory and motor function, rostridi, respectively. Step four, determine whether the injury is complete or incomplete. This relates to whether or not there is sacral sparing. If there is no voluntary anal contraction, if all the sensory scores for S4 and 5 are zero, and if there is no deep anal pressure, the injury is classed as complete. Step five, determine the Asia impairment scale grade. This is graded from A to E. Document your findings on the score sheet as guided by the boxes. You have now successfully assessed a patient with a spinal cord injury.